Hi everyone, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and I am here today to talk to you about 20 of my most anticipated releases for 2023. I have researched new books coming out by authors I love, I've gone through publishers catalogues and I have this list that I have put together in roughly chronological order. Some of them I have to hand, I have a couple of early proofs. Most of them I don't have to hand yet and I will insert the covers if there even are covers available just yet. And I will list everything that I'm talking about in the description box down below as well. I would love to know what books you are most looking forward to in 2023. And before I get into this list of 20 books, I'm adding two more, if I may, because I have two new books coming out in 2023. I'm just gonna quickly talk about them because one of them isn't even available for pre-order yet. So let me just mention them and then I'll tell you more about them as the months pass by. So the first one is coming out in April and it's called Marceline, Defender of the Sea. This is something a little bit different for me because it's part of a reader series which is primarily going into schools, but it's still gonna be available in bookshops to buy as well. So it's a series of books inspired in some shape or form by fairy tale. Mine is about a young girl called Marceline who learns about the history of fairy tales at school. Everyone in her class, or at least she feels like everyone in her class, is gonna have a really exciting holiday coming up. They're either gonna be relaxing with friends and family or they're going away on holiday, but she is scheduled to go in for an operation during the holidays. She has external dysplasia, so a lot of her condition pulls from my experience of childhood and disability. So it's about what it's like living this kind of dual existence of school life versus hospital life and how you navigate that. Um, it was uh, difficult to write in parts because it was pulling from um, my own experience, but I was very glad to have been given the opportunity to write it. It's illustrated by Valentina Toro, which I'm just so thrilled about. I had asked if Valentina could illustrate it. She is a fellow disabled creative. She has an upper limb difference as well. And I just, it just fills my heart with warmth to have this book that's written by and illustrated by disabled people, which centers disability in some way. I just think that's really powerful and I'm really proud of it. So that's coming out in April. It's not a whole novel, it's a novella slash a long short story. Um, and it's primarily for year six, which would be ages, 10, 11, but I would say anyone, 9, 12, and also, you know, if it piques your interest and you would like to have a read of it and you're a grown up, there's nothing wrong with that either. I just wanna make sure that you know what it is before going into it. I will leave pre-order links in the description box down below. Because it's not a full novel and because it's a part of a reader series, it is um, cheaper than um, your average book. I think this is about six or seven pounds and it's fully illustrated in color as well. I'm just very, very happy about that book. So that's coming out in April. It is available for pre-order, international delivery links also in the description box. The other book isn't coming out until September and this is the one that isn't available for pre-order yet. So I'll just briefly mention it, but this is um, quite possibly the most difficult book that I have written. It won't be difficult to read, I just mean it was difficult to write. So this is my second full length collection for Grown Ups Poetry, which is being published by Blood Axe, and it's called Please Do Not Touch This Exhibit. Um, like with The Girl Aquarium, it pulls on similar themes of Victorian circus and freak show, forests, steep seas, fairy tales, folklore. But I was writing about my experience of being a disabled kid in and out of hospital and then the juxtaposition of being a disabled adult who's going through IVF and my experience of hospital in that respect too. A, kind of a bit about how we can mythologize trauma. Um, and yeah, as I'm sure you can guess from that description, that's a little nervous laugh from me because it's been, um, yeah, a lot to write, but I'm really proud of it and people are saying really nice things about it uh, and I don't wanna get all embarrassed by reading those things aloud. So I will put some of the quotes on the screen that have been coming in about the collection so far, um, which just 
fills my heart with warmth and I think I may have used that phrase already but I'm, I'm feeling lots of warmth in my heart today so I'm just going to say it multiple times and for anyone who is blind or visually impaired there is a link in the description box down below to the page on my website about this book where if you're using a screen reader it can read those quotes aloud to you. Um, so yeah, this one is not available for pre-order yet. I will let you know when it is. Um, and uh, that's all I have to say about it because I can't talk about it much more because it's so far away. Anyway, so those are my next two books which are coming out in 2023. These will be books 11 and 12 for me. Um, so if you're new to my channel and you haven't checked out my books before and you would like to, links to all of them are in the description box down below. All right, so shall we get on to other people's books? I have made a list on my phone. Let us dive in. Okay, so the first book that's on my list is Now She Is Witch by Kirstie Logan. This is coming out in January. This is a beautiful hardback proof, but the cover will look like this. Let me read the blurb to you. It says, Now She Is Witch begins with Lux burying her mother's bones among the nettles in her poison garden. Her mother has been killed and Lux is now a target too. When a mysterious hooded woman called Else appears and asks for Lux's help taking revenge on her enemies, Lux sees an opportunity to start again. Together the two of them travel north through dark forests to the nearby city where the secrets of their pasts and the violence of their futures comes to light. You know that I love Kirstie's work. She's great. Um, we recorded a podcast together a couple of years ago, um, which I'll link in the description box down below, where she touched a little bit on this and other things that she was writing at the time. Next on my list, we have this, which is a proof copy of Owlish by Dorothy Tse, which is translated from the Chinese by Natasha Bruce. This sounds like it is inspired by E.T.A. Hoffman's fairy tales. Maybe Angela Carter's reworking of Hoffman's fairy tale as well in the, what's it, in the Infernal Desire Machines of Dr. Hoffman. Um, but it says that this is set in the mountainous city of Nevers, which I just love to begin with. There lives a professor of literature there called Q. He has a dull marriage and a lackluster career, but also a scrumptious collection of antique dolls locked away in his cupboard. I don't want to know more than that. I just don't. I'm very excited about it. Um, this, as I said, is a proof, but the cover will look like this in the Fitzcarraldo blue because this is a novel. Also coming out in February, we have Ayabami Adebayo's second novel, which I'm so excited about because I have been eagerly anticipating this one ever since I read Stay With Me when it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize years ago. Ayabami and I also recorded a podcast together in 20... 19 I think it was so I will link that in the description box down below she was talking about writing this book she was only hinting at it but the difficulties of writing a second novel because it's intense so this is about uh, two people Eniola who was tall for his age a boy who looks like a man his father has lost his job so Eniola spends his days running errands for the local tailor collecting newspapers and begging dreaming of a big future and Wuriola is a golden girl the perfect child of a wealthy family now an exhausted young doctor in her first year of practice she is beloved by Kunle the volatile son of family friends and then their lives collide and drama ensues I believe so this is called a spell of good things and it is coming out in February okay next on my list is a book I don't have to hand so I'll put the cover here it's called notes on her color by Jennifer Neal and it's mixing magical realism with family saga it's about a young woman called Gabrielle I think she's a teenager and she has inherited the ability to change the color of her skin from her mother so she is a black indigenous woman and her mother tells her to pass into white if she doesn't want to upset her father. Then her mother is hospitalized for a mental health crisis and she, I don't know if she falls in love with her piano teacher who was a darker skinned black woman. Uh, who's called Dominique but she is a queer woman in her life and I think a vital leading voice in her life and together the pair of them work out how she's going to navigate the world as an adult. Um, I think that this could be brilliant so that one is on my list and then next we have The Home Child by Liz Berry which is coming out in March and I do have a copy of this. Hold oh, please it is just on the ground down here. Home Child so this is an early bound proof. If you've been here a while you know that I adore Liz Berry's poetry. I've loved her since her first pamphlet came out from Tall Lighthouse, which was a very long time ago, but this is her latest collection. The last one was called The Republic of Motherhood. This is 
the home child. The beginning of the introduction says, in 1908, my grandmother's aunt, Eliza Showell, aged 12 and newly orphaned, was sent from the Middlemore Children's Emigration Homes in Birmingham to rural Nova Scotia in Canada. She never returned to Britain or saw her brothers again. So this is about um, the, the home children. It's about children's migration, but it's specifically about a relative of hers and she has imagined um, her life and written a collection of poetry about it and that sounds brilliant so I'm looking forward to getting to that one. Next on my list we have Blue Hunger by Viola Di Grado and if I'm remembering correctly this is coming out in either March or April and has a cover that looks a bit like Lapvona. At least the colour scheme is reminding me of Lapvona. It is set in Shanghai, it's about two women called Zhu and Rubin and they are taking little yellow pills which it says will make all dangerous things feel safe. They're both running from a turbulent past in abandoned factories and dilapidated slaughterhouses. Zhu pushes Ruben to extremes of pleasure and pain. This asks how we can create identities and how we escape them. It is a fever dream of a novel, visionary and uncanny. So this one definitely on my list intrigues me. Then we've got Eyes, Guts, Throats, Bones by Maura Fowley and this is coming out in April. This is a collection of short stories and it sounds very quirky. It says, what will the end of the world look like? Will it be an old man slowly turned to gold, flowers raining from the sky, or a hole cut through the wire fencing that keeps the monsters out? Is it someone you love wearing your face or a good old fashioned interdimensional summoning? Does it sound like a howl inside the window or does it look like coming home? I really hope that that's as brilliant as it sounds like it's going to be. Then in April we also have a new novel from the lovely Max Porter um, and I feel like actually cosplaying orange and green today. This is his latest novel, Shy. You know that I'm all over this. It says, this is the story of a few strange hours in the life of a troubled teenage boy. He is wandering into the night, listening to the voices in his head, his teachers, his parents, the people he has hurt, and the people who are trying to love him. He is escaping a last chance, a home for very disturbed young men, and walking into the haunted space between his night terrors, his past, and the heavy question of his future. The back says, the night is huge and it hurts. Max is the author of Grief is a Thing with Feathers and Lanny, both of which I adore. Next is a book that I am so excited about. This is Death of a Bookseller by the lovely Alice Slater. Alice runs a podcast with Bethany Rutter called What Page Pod and she also has written lots of things for anthologies, many of which we've both been part of. So I'm very familiar with her work and she used to host a short story salon at Waterstone Gower Street so she, we've done events there before. I just love her writing. This is her debut novel. It's got so much buzz. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I imagine it's going to be quite mosh peggy and I think that Alice would like that comparison. So this is set in a bookshop and it's about two very different women. We've got Roach and we have got, what is the name of the other bookseller? Um, Laura. So Laura loves customers and loves talking to customers. Roach hates customers <laughs> but loves books and loves true crime podcasts. And then Roach discovers a crime that happened in Laura's past and becomes really obsessed with it. Um, I'm always intrigued by books that are about female obsessions, maybe with queer undertones, overtones, not sure about that element in this book because I haven't read it yet, but I'm very excited to get my teeth into it. I'm sure it's going to be disturbing and disgusting and delightful. Then we have got Biography of X by Catherine Lacey, which is also coming out in April, which I also have a copy of. This one is is rather large. So I read my first, first Catherine Lacey in 2021 when I read Pew, which was a very short novel about a town who were perplexed when a young person arrived in their uh, local church and couldn't tell them what their name was or where they came from, what gender they were, what race they were. And it got more and more claustrophobic as you read on. And the town became more and more angry that this person wouldn't conform and fit into this box that they wanted them to fit in. It was, um, 
It was a very intense book and I thought it was really well done. I've since read some of her short stories and not enjoyed those as much, but I'm intrigued to read her latest novel, which as I said, is coming out in April and it's called Biography of X. I don't wanna know very much about this, so I'm just gonna read you the quote that's on the front, which I love. It says, the title of this book, as titles so often are, is a lie. This is not a biography, but rather a wrong turn taken and followed. The document of a woman learning what she should have let lie in ignorance. Perhaps this is what all books are, the end of someone's trouble, someone putting their trouble into a pleasing order so that someone else will look at it. Love that. The next book on my list is one that I'm keeping my eye on. Some of these are ones I'm definitely going to pre-order and some of them are ones that I'm interested in but want to see reviews of first. So this is The Last Animal, blah, 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 let me try that one again, The Last Animal by Ramona Ospel. The cover looks like this. I have loved her short stories in the past. Um, so this says it is a playful, witty and resident novel in which a single mother and her two teen daughters engage in a wild scientific experiment. So two uh, daughters, sisters, Eve and Vera, are in the Arctic with their mum and some serious biologists and they go rogue and they go off exploring on their own and they find a perfectly preserved 4,000 year old baby mammoth and then it says and then things start to get interesting. And I don't know why, but that just made me giggle. So I'm looking forward to seeing what people think of that and maybe picking that one up myself. That one is also coming out in April. Another book coming out in April, lots of big books coming out in April. We've got Arrangements in Blue by Amy Key. I have read Amy's poetry in the past and really, really loved it. This is her, I think her first foray into non-fiction. Lots of people have been giving very, very good quotes in advance of this coming out. So it says that it's with profound candor and intimacy, she explores the painful feelings we are usually too ashamed to discuss, loneliness, envy, grief, and failure. The result is a singular work, a beautifully written and essential book about building a life on your own terms. And I, I'm hoping it's gonna be maybe a bit like Bluettes by Maggie Nelson and also, bigger than that but that's not just because it's got blue in the title but that's what I'm getting from the reviews that I have have seen about it. Next coming out in May we have a new graphic novel from Kay O'Neill who is the author of The Tea Dragon Society, Aquacorn Cove and Princess Princess Ever After. This one is called Moth Keeper and I'm here for it. It says Anya is finally a moth keeper, the protector of the lunar moths that allow the night lily flower to bloom once a year. Her village needs the flower to continue thriving and Anya is excited to prove her worth and show her thanks to her friends with her actions. But what happens when being a moth keeper isn't exactly what Anya thought it would be. Their colour palettes are always so stunning brilliant disability and queer representation and everything just feels like the biggest hug imaginable so I'm very excited for it. Then on the 4th of May we have Chrysalis by Anna Metcalf. This book gives me vegetarian by Han Kang vibes because it's three different perspectives on one woman and I don't think that any of the perspectives are actually hers. So it says what happens when a woman dares to take up space? An enigmatic young woman drastically transforms her body. So she goes to the gym, she works out a lot after having a traumatic experience. And then it says that we see her through the eyes of three people, each differently mesmerized by her as they reckon with the consequences of her bizarre metamorphosis. So we see Elliot's point of view. He's someone who goes to the gym to work out too. We see her through her mother's observations. And we also see her observed through her former colleague, Susie. Um, I just think that sounds great. And then in uh, June, we have another one, which I have a copy of. Sorry, I keep looking down because I have books scattered all over the floor. So Faber have signed two books from Yan Ji, who is the author of Strange Beasts of China, which was translated from the Chinese by Jeremy Chiang, and that was published by Tilted Access Press last year or the year before, and I absolutely loved it. It was really bizarre. So Faber have signed her next two books. The first one is a short story collection called Elsewhere. The second is a novel called Hotel Destination. I'm guessing that'll come out in 2024 rather than 2023, but I'm not sure yet. But this is a proof of the short story collection. And it says that these short stories are magical, brilliant, and disturbing. That's kind of all I need to know about them. And also what's interesting is this is her English language debut. As I said, Strange Beasts of China was translated, but this one she wrote in English 
herself. Oh, and I should also say that this says it's perfect for fans of Under the Skin by Michelle Faber, Earthlings by Siaka Murata, and the film The Lobster. Do you need any more persuading? I don't think that you do. <laughs> then in July, we have Penance by Eliza Clark. Eliza Clark is the author of Boy Parts, which I read in 2020 or 2021, and absolutely loved. So this is her next novel, her second novel. It says, do you know what happened already? Did you know her? Did you see it on the internet? Did you listen to a podcast? Did the host make jokes? Did you see pictures of the body? Did you look for them? So this is a book that um, brings together, I think, podcast extracts, letters between killers, um, text messages, news reports to um, write about a crime, a fictional crime that happened in a town. It says you're following journalist Alec Z. Corelli, who is constructing what he calls the definitive narrative of an old case. But I think there's a lot of unreliable narration going on in this book and you're trying to work out how much of it is actually true. Next we have a book that is coming out I think in August it's called The Owl Cries by Hai Young Pyun and it's translated from the Korean by Sora Kim Russell. It says it's a slow burning noir thriller with a touch of horror and the uncanny. It's set in the forest where a man has gone missing but the forester back in Su, who is a recovering alcoholic claims he has no knowledge of the man who disappeared even though the missing man had worked as a forester just before him. The police then go and speak to all the members of the local village who also claim they have never seen this man who went missing but it's very clear that they are all lying but the question is why? Intriguing. A book that I know nothing about apart from the person who wrote it and I read one of their books and I like them so it's on the list. We have Didi's Umbrella by Huang Jun Yun and it's translated from the Korean by Emily Ye Won. They wrote the book I'll Go On, which I read last year, and it was one of my favourite books of the year. It was a beautiful found family saga. I loved it. So that's coming out in August 2023, but I know nothing about it at all, so I'm just throwing it out there. We've got two more, and the first one is one that I had never heard of, but one of you mentioned it to me and said you thought it would be something I would like. And when I read the blurb, I thought, this book has just been written for me. How nice. So it's called The Forest Brims Over by Muro Ayasi. It's translated from the Japanese by Hayden Trowell. And it sounds like The Vegetarian by Hong Kong meets Mrs. March by Virginia Fito. It's about a woman who turns herself into a forest because she's really sick of her husband writing about her in his novels. So she wants to get away from him and change herself and make herself, I guess, camouflage so that he can't pinpoint details about her and make money off those things. So it says that the wife consumes a bowl of seeds and then roots and buds sprout all over her body and she grows and grows and grows until she takes over an entire city. It just sounds so good. Then finally we have a short story collection by Chloe Chiang called Let's Go, Let's Go, Let's Go and it says it explores the alienated technology mediated lives of restless Asian and Asian American women today. So a woman escapes into dating simulations to forget her best friend's abandonment. A teenager begins to see menacing omens on other bodies after double eyelid surgery. Reunited schoolmates are drawn into the Japanese mountains to participate in an uncanny social experiment. A supernatural karaoke machine becomes a K-pop star's channel for redemption. I just think that sounds brilliant too. So those are 20 books that I am super excited about, intrigued by, will be keeping my eyes on going into 2023, plus two of my books that are coming out next year. I would love to know if any of these books are on your radar. If you would like to pre-order a copy of Marceline, Defender of the Sea, my new book coming out in April, that would be lovely. If you're new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely to have you around. And if you like my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, link to that is in the description box down below as well. I hope you're all doing okay and I will see you for another video next week.